Hey, Merry Christmas. It's Lewis Cahill for Gink and Gasoline. It's Christmas Eve 2012, and I thought today would be a great day to show you guys how to tie a Christmas tree fly. So get your eggnog and your tying tools out, and let's go do it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers, and I'm going to nip off the point of this hook because you do not want to spend Christmas Eve pulling a fish hook out of your wife's cat. Then I'm going to start some chartreuse uni floss on the hook shank back near the bend of the hook. I'm going to nip that off clean and just to help things out I'm going to put a dab of brushable crazy glue on there to cement it in place. That will help that get nice and firm. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pheasant fibers here from a little pheasant tail, just a brown pheasant tail and cut off just a little pinch there. And I'll take the ends and I'll trim them nice and blunt, maybe three quarters of an inch long or so. And I'll tie the pheasant fibers in and that is going to form the trunk of our Christmas tree. Then I'm going to take a little piece of gold tinsel, six inches long or so, and I'm going to tie that in for our ribbing. Okay, now that all that's done, I'm going to use a little bit of chartreuse quick descent aluminum dubbing. And I'm going to make a little ball of dubbing down here at the base to try to help um, keep our um, deer hair when we spin it in control. So this will give us a nice sort of stop to run that up against. There we go. Now we're going to start spinning some deer hair. I've got some chartreuse deer belly hair. This is a hollow hair. Um, so when you pinch it down with a thread, it spins nicely. If you've never spun deer hair before, um, it's a lot of fun. It's a little chaotic, um, but you can do some really cool stuff with it. So I'm going to cut off a nice healthy pinch of that. And then what I'm going to do is lay it across the hook at 45 degree angle. And I'll take two loose wraps around it. There's one. And then the second one, I'll pull a little tighter bring it around and now the hairs as I continue to wrap the hair is going to roll and it's going to flare out and this is why I like that uni floss because I can torque it down put a lot of pressure on it all right now what we have to do here at the base first of all I'm going to take my cone head my gold cone head I forgot to mention I put a gold cone head on this hook and I'm actually going to use that to kind of pack that deer hair back a little bit there we go Got a nice flat and then work it through, work your thread through the fibers around to the front, pack it again. And this is the same technique that you would use to tie uh, deer hair sculpin heads for streamer flies or um, to tie traditional deer hair bass poppers. And the difference between the two is kind of how much you pack it, right? The, um, if you want a fly that's going to float like a bass popper, you need to pack that deer hair really nice and tight. I put a lot of dense deer hair on the hook. For a streamer uh, where the fly is going to sink, you want looser, coarser wraps. Um, for a Christmas tree, doesn't really matter. Um, packing the deer hair really tight like you would for a popper is a pain, and it goes through a lot of deer hair, so I usually do it fairly loose. So I'm going to spin on a second pinch of deer hair, and just keep wrapping until that deer hair stops spinning. And then again, take your cone head and mash it down until you can get your fingers around it. And work your thread through the fibers. And then you can mash it back and just kind of build up a little thread in front of it. it will help hold the deer hair in place. And we'll just keep working forward with this. Packing deer hair on our hook. Okay, I think I can fit one more small pinch of deer hair in there. Between that body and the cone head. There we go. All right. 
So there's a big bushy body. Now the next step is to trim this thing so that it looks something like a Christmas tree. I'm gonna take a regular double-sided razor blade. And I like these because they're nice and flexible. You can bend them. And I'm just going to trim that deer hair into a nice tapered shape. This is a little time consuming, but it's also kind of the fun part of it too, because you can sculpt just about any shape you want out of deer hair. You just have to be careful while you're doing this not to cut your thread or your tinsel or any of that. There we go, it's starting to shape up now, it's starting to look a little bit like something. This makes a mess. Then bring it, come in with your uh, deer hair scissors and trim up the bottom. And this is all totally subjective. You just kind of, you know that old elephant joke about how do you carve an elephant out of a block of marble? You start with a block of marble and cut away everything that doesn't look like an elephant. You start with a big pile of deer hair and cut away everything that doesn't look like a Christmas tree. There you go, and when you're satisfied, that you have a nice tapered Christmas tree body, you're done. Now we're gonna wrap our gold floss, and this is a little bit tricky. You don't want to put any pressure at all as you bring this around the body of your fly, because if you do, it will bury into your deer hair and you won't see it. So you just put as many wraps as you feel like looks good, or as you have the patience to, to put up with, around the body of your Christmas tree. We'll bring that right up to our cone head. And then I'll just take a couple of wraps to cinch it and pull it down under that cone. And then we'll trim it off. I'll take a quick uh, whip finish and work that up under your cone head too. We're not going to be fishing this, so you don't have to make six loops. Two or three will work fine. There you go. Now you can come back with your bodkin and work that tinsel to where you want it. The tinsel is definitely the uh, trickiest part of the fly, getting this stuff to lay right and look like Christmas tree tinsel is the, the trick. There you go. Now there's one other step that I like to do here, and that is when I put on my little Christmas tree hanger, I went to the Michaels Craft Store and bought some little beads that are shaped like stars and I put those in like so. And there's your Christmas tree fly. Ready for the tree. So pour yourself some eggnog, tie yourself a Christmas tree fly, and have a great holiday. From Kent and I both, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for tuning in to Gink and Gasoline.